and welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for some Abzan Adventure, which is our first deck of the day today. We got three donation decks that we're going to be playing today. We're going to be playing a league with each one, um, seeing if we get to five wins before two losses, see what happens first there. Um, all standard decks today. We had a really fun historic uh, stream yesterday, a long 12-hour stream if y'all missed uh, that. If you're watching on YouTube, hope you check out some of those videos because a lot of good games, a lot of, a lot of fun at decks. All right, but talking about our decks today, our first one here is Abzan Adventure. So yeah, we got a, a Throne of Eldraine inspired deck, of course, built around our adventure uh, cards. Um, you know, we have Edgewall, Innkeeper, Lucky Clover. This is probably nothing new to most of y'all uh, that play standard. Um, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't imagine it is <laughs> at this point. Um, but yes, you know, we have all of our adventure creatures in here. We have our, kind of like our base Golgari ones that we know are really good. Innkeeper, Foulmire Knight, Order of Midnight to get stuff back, Lovestruck Beast, Murderous Rider, um, and then, of course, Beanstalk Giant with Lucky Clover, because this with Lucky Clover is just so incredibly powerful. And that's why our mana base kind of looks a little odd how we're playing so many basic lands. It's because we want to be able to um, get lots of basic lands if we, have multi we find multiple Beanstalk Giants with multiple Lucky Clovers. Um, but then we're also, besides just those Golgari ones, we're splashing a little bit of white in here. We're going Abzan. <clears throat> white gives us a uh, Shepherd of the Flock that can protect our Edgewall Innkeeper or just other spells. Or, you know, if we need to uh, bounce even like a Murderous Rider because we need to reuse Swift End, we can do that. We can bounce Beanstalk Giant if we want to just ramp some more. You know, nothing wrong with ramping some more. And so on. Um, you know, bounce our Order of Midnight to be able to get even more creatures back, especially if there's a Lucky Clover in play. So a lot of cool things we can do with Shepherd of the Flock. Um, we have Giant Killer that gives us some more removal besides just Murderous Rider for larger creatures. Take down some Questing Beasts and the like. And also just give us a, a good little tapper there. Um, if you're like, need to work on your short game in golf, you need to just tap it in. We got the Giant Killer. And then, of course, we have the Fairy Guide Mother also, which is uh, does a couple of things. It's a 1-1, it's a one -one, which is it's important to play a lot of 1-1s one with Lovestruck Beast. So that's uh, the first thing. But then the Gift of the Fae can end a lot of games, um, giving one of our creatures plus 2, plus 1, and flying. That could be um, like the Lovestruck Beast giving this, you know, making it 7 power flying. That can do a lot of damage. But even more damage, of course, is a large Beanstalk Giant give this thing flying uh, that can end games right away all right then we got like four uh top end things we got one of each we got a the great henge the card's amazing we have a liliana and a garrick so we have two awesome six mana planeswalkers and we also have a soren that is basically like another copy of order of midnight uh you know you can minus one to bring back edgewall innkeeper and you can kind of do that a couple of times um, if need be. And plus, you can give all your creatures lifelink. So, you know, we have these large creatures like Lovestruck Beast and Beanstalk Giant. We can give them lifelink to win races and everything like that. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's that's it. That's our deck. Um, sideboard, we got a bunch of interaction depending on what our opponent's playing. Really like Night of Autumn these days, as y'all know. Um, we got this Finale of Eternity, which could be pretty awesome with uh, being able to ramp with Beanstalk Giant and the Great Henge if we can ramp a whole lot. Um, we could play this thing for 10, return all of our creature cards from the graveyard to the battlefield. But this isn't really like a control card, and that's not really the point of the card. Really, the point of the card is against other creature decks being something that can just be like a, a five mana, destroy their three creatures, then we get to attack in and, and that kind of stuff. All right, so let's get some games going. So again, we're going to play till we win five or lose two, whatever happens first. If a Merfolk Trickster targeted Beanstalk Giant with its ETB ability, would Beanstalk Giant die immediately? Um, because Beanstalk Giant is just a zero zero that has power and toughness each equal number of lands you control. So, yeah, because it would lose that ability. So, yes, it would. Yep. So Trickster would kill a Beanstalk Giant. Okay. Uh, 
Because, yeah, I wouldn't have any abilities anymore, so it would just be a 0-0. Zero, zero. Hello. Oh, I should have... I should have just led with Fable Passage. Okay, cool. I don't really like playing these things without getting use of them, but I guess I guess we'll just get this thing out here. All right, well, new deck. Getting the kinks out. Man, Arena's acting really slow today. That was not good. <laughs> if the target creature has power, toughness, written as star, star with the ability that defines its power and toughness, it's 0-0 zero, zero when it loses all abilities. So, yeah. There we go. That's our answer. Hey, Destiny. What's up? All right, well, my, these cards aren't really doing anything, unfortunately, here for this matchup. It's like I, I could just play a bunch of small creatures out, I guess. I feel like they could do more than that, though. Let's target permanent. Hmm. Alright, so the problem with playing the Garrick here, so I would like the Shepherd of Flock to be able to protect Garrick. Because they, they have Agent of Treachery in the graveyard. Oh, they're a questing beast deck. But I guess we'd still, even if they would have, you know, like we could wait one turn. And even if they had Agent of Treachery that turn. We'd still be able to Murderous Rider it, but, you know, if we got to untap and protect it, that's the best case scenario, of course. Yeah, Sultai Self Mill Questing Beast. Run or hide. I just want to keep three mana up to be able to keep Murderous Rider up, and of course, I need to keep up a one white for the Shepherd of the Flock. Um, honestly, don't know if we really sideboard. So yeah, Shepherd of the Flock can return any permanent we control, so it's very good against 
Agent of Treachery, if you can keep it available, you know, it can, it can return your Liliana or Garrick. It doesn't really seem like my opponent's killing my stuff, so I'm not sure how great Soren and Order of Midnight are. Order of Midnight can just attack very well, though. Um... I could see siding out Soren. I'm not sure there's anything here I really want to play that much, though. Duress would maybe be our, a good card to take, like, Blood for Bones and everything. Um, yeah, this this mode it, it uses um, record based matchmaking. We're O and O, you know, we're zero and zero now. Um, good chance the opponent is zero zero. Also, it's not it's not always perfect though. It's not if you're four and O, you're always gonna play against somebody else who's four and O because it does. Uh, match try to match quickly as well so it tries to match the same but then also it it does care about matching quickly so wait Tristani yeah that's yeah that's Tristani um Yeah, I mean, this this deck could use a Tristani. Because, um, yeah, it is it is good against steel effects. But Tristani, the, the problem with Tristani is it only affects... It only affects um, creatures that get stolen. Not... Not other permanents. Let's play a game of so if they use a Agent of Treachery, can take any permanent. So if they Agent of Treachery a Garrick or a Lucky Clover or a land, Tristani doesn't help. Hmm. I guess I need to wait a turn. Thought about waiting a turn with the Shepherd of the Flock. Looks like I need to. Um, any decent soul tie food lists? Um, I don't think there's. I don't think there's really soul tie food anymore because the reason to play blue was Oko, and Oko is banned. There's not really a reason to play blue with the food decks. Um, oh wait, I was thinking. I was thinking sacrifice, like soul tie sacrifice. You can still play blue in the food decks with Hydroid Crisis. That's still a very good card. Is this just what they want? Creatures in the graveyard? Do they just want Scholar of Ages in the graveyard? Let us have a storied battle worth retelling. The past is never forgotten. Um, but anyway, I guess I, I haven't played any Soul Thai food lists myself in a while. Definitely wish I would have waited a turn on this Garrick, because we're drawing nothing but land now.
Hmm. I don't really like my options here. We'll just get more, basically turn that into like a draw two. We'll just get more lands out of the deck. So we're four out of the 19 cards. We've gotten 14 lands out of the deck already in 19 cards. So there's 11 more in the deck and 30, 30 spells, 11 cards. <laughs> There's just a shepherd with some wolves, nothing to see here. I know, right? Shepherd hanging out with the wolves. Definitely should have waited on playing the, the Garrick. Innkeeper! Yay! Oh right, I forgot I forgot I could copy this. I forgot about copying this thing. I should have done this last turn. I could have just done this with both the wolves last turn. I just didn't really consider that we were getting two things flying. I don't know why I didn't. So anyway, we had a long day yesterday. <laughs> it's good. I'm I'm working my way into it today. We're getting there. Not at my normal sharpness yet. So I want to play that land first in case we draw like another shepherd. Um, they're probably not killing Innkeeper this turn, right? Hopefully. Oh, wait, they can just connive it? That'd be mean. We have lethal for next turn, even though they have a Gilded Goose they can block. We did not have lethal because they had the Gilded Goose to block.
We're gonna need to chain off a whole bunch of adventure creatures here. That's what we're gonna need to do. Ugh. Puts me down to two. Oh no, it puts me to zero. I have two Lucky Clovers now. Alright, well, not casting this. The Great Henge, we need you first. <laughs> Do it, go out with style. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I could I could make the murderous rider fizzle and just hit one thing, and then it fizzles. We don't draw a card. Yeah, I just target just target like all everything with the same thing. So they get two agent and treachery triggers here. It's we're done. They're gonna take my the great henge. Okay. So we have to get not so flooded. And I need to protect Garrick better. I did not do a good job of protecting Garrick. Duress wouldn't be r too bad here. I'll take out a giant killer for a dress. No, we are we already have we don't need to spark for a questing beast, we already have Murderous Rider and Giant Killer. Okay, this is good. Do I wanna play i I'm not gonna play Foulmire Knight, I'm gonna draw a card with that. Do we wanna play Fairy Guide Mother and just start getting one damage in? You know, on turn one here, just start getting one, two, three, four. Maybe. <laughs> Never mind. So much for that plan. No, I did not put into Spark for Agent and Treachery. No. Still just playing pretty slow if we find it at Wall Innkeeper. We can play a bunch of things.
will have revenge for House Markov. What would I recommend for a blue, blue, uh, or a soul tie deck? Blue, green, black. Um. It's fine. I don't have I don't have a great recommendation for a Sultai for a Sultai deck right now, honestly, a blue, green, black deck. Um Yeah, I'm not I'm not exactly sure. Um I'm trying I'm trying to remember if we've played a Sultai deck recently, like something that didn't have Oko in it. But I can't, can't think of anything that didn't have Oko. I, just ha I haven't been playing very much Sultai recently. Yeah, so I'm not sure. I'm, I'm kind of looking at, at MTG Goldfish at different decks right now. I'm not really seeing any. Sultai decks. So I don't know. I don't, I don't have a great recommendation. I just took my Temple Garden. Okay. I'm sorry, ARX. I don't, I don't really have one for you right now. So obviously I do not want my opponent to have like blood for bones and be able to keep sacrificing their agent treachery and bringing it back. That's that's how we're going to lose this. Um which is where Despark would would come in. Cuz it's like I I can't really kill their agent of treachery. So if I do that, they may just reanimate it. So our way to win is a long drown out game. I would like to draw the um. I mean, obviously, we need to get this great engine play. But we just we can't yet. Uh, but I'd like to draw uh, the Shepherd of the Flock that can protect the Great Henge as well. Uh. 
Uh, this is White Noise by Disclosure. Hopefully I don't have another removal spell. We can play Great Henge, then Innkeeper, and start going crazy. Awesome, Durf. Glad you're enjoying the, the Historic Rule deck from yesterday. Yeah, that was, that was definitely a really good one. Pretty good. Sure. Okay, it's a lot more mana that we need. That was a really good draw. We get two lands out of our deck, and we get two 1-1s, one and now we have three more adventure creatures that we get to cast as well. So overall, that was a great card. No, Oven and Fires are not the next things to be banned. Which is Oven and Fires and Invention will not get, get, get banned. Witches, Witches Oven has a 0% chance ever. Fires, because it makes all the extra mana, may, I mean, a, you know, like a 1 or 2% chance that, that it ever will, but no, those are not cards that are good enough to get banned. Well, Witches Oven has no shot of ever getting banned. That's not, that's not, that card's not good enough to get banned. Um, Definitely really like having this Shepherd of the Flock here too. Okay, here we go. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not expecting anything to be banned at all before like the next set. Like I don't think there's any I don't think there's really anything that's going to be banned before the next set comes out. Yeah, I could have saved that. I don't think we need to, though. I think that Shepherd of the Flock is, needs to be used as something more impactful, you know, like saving the Great Henge.
All right, this is going great for us. Yeah, we did all historic yesterday. We played seven new historic decks yesterday. Good. Yeah, I like I like historic, and yeah, we'll be playing historic on the channel and everything. Um, I know, I know I'm gonna be playing Historic tomorrow for a mono, I have a mono black control donation deck to do tomorrow with Historic, but yes, so yes, we'll, this will be a st Historic friendly channel. Your talents are worth cataloging. <laughs> it's okay, yeah. Yeah, that's we did twelve hours of historic yesterday. But I got I got three standard donation decks to do today. Hey, what's up, Joe? It's going good. All right, that's a little annoying. Get rid of these blockers. You can attack for a bunch. Thankfully, the Great Henge keeps keeping our life total nice and high. Let's see what happens. We get a swamp out of the deck. Gives us a lower chance of drawing a land. And we need more black mana anyway. <laughs> Still draw swamp. That looks good. I don't, didn't really feel like playing the other Lucky Clover out because remember, Lucky Clover, Lucky Clover plus Shepherd isn't isn't amazing because you have to you know target more things. Of course, you know you can't just let the Shepherd fizzle and target just the one thing. But um, I guess this doesn't really matter. Eh, I'll still do it. I'll just pick up these Lucky Clovers. We got enough mana. I 
I assume I'm targeting the correct one, but I guess I don't really know if I am or not, because <laughs> it's kind of covered up the whole time. Because basically I just know that I'm going to be attacking them for lethal here, so... Might as well do those. Alright, I was going to be able... To, they tapped the Gilded Goose, so I was going to be able to give the... The 13-13 flying. And fly over for the win. Okay. Alright, I'm going to try resetting Arena. I know we've had it... We've had it up for a while, even though we've only played one game, because we were doing stuff with decks and stuff like that. So I'll try resetting, because yeah, I know that it's acting slower than ever right now with the with the lag. Um. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll be. Get you know, buying a new computer soon, getting it set up in the next couple weeks, and everything. That's the plan. I, I was talking to a friend earlier today about what I should be buying and all that kind of stuff. So, no, you cannot decline Clover copies. No, it's not. No, you can't decline to copy. You have to target. You you can choose different targets, but you have to copy and choose different targets. You have to choose targets. Yeah, targeting the same thing and, and declining are different. Those are those are different things. Alright, this doesn't really look like a lucky clover hand. Hey boo. against basic island. I think it's probably safe to play it turn one. They missed a land drop. So I'm just going to be aggressive and keep on getting this stuff out here. Oh. Hey, Mind's de Desire. Okay, do a deck tech with that deck? Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, we'll we'll do that after the after the league here, Mind's Desire. Um, if you don't mind waiting till after the league, okay. So Mardu fires. Awesome. Okay, so Esper Doom it makes sense to play Knight of Autumns into Sparks and Duresses. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, so ap after we get done playing Abzan Adventure, because so then it, you know, we'll do it, you know, finish up like the YouTube video and everything, and then we'll uh, do the deck tech there. Let's see, oh, you own a, a gaming and streaming, or you own a computer shop in Napoli, Italy? That sounds wonderful. I 
I guess the only thing Lucky Clover is really going to be doing in this matchup is just Order of Midnight and Beanstalk Giant. Man, it's a great place. Uh, man, I bet it is. I don't really feel like just playing Edgewall Innkeepers here without being able to get any value from them is a great idea. You know, they could have just have like a Legion's End. So we should have budget week where like one game a day shows an easy to build play deck for new players. No, I've, I've definitely been thinking about that of making just um, maybe do that like I was even thinking like more of like a monthly thing of do make um, you know like make some budget decks uh, for new players like where you just have no no rares or mythics and. Probably, and uh, just see how how good a deck you can make with no rares or mythics at all. Um, any thought on mono black control have the legs in historic? Um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to be playing mono black control in historic tomorrow. I have a donation to make a mono black control deck. So yeah, I'm going to be building one tomorrow, and we'll kind of see how it does. So I'm not yeah. So just not too sure right now, but we'll kind of see what happens tomorrow. Oh yeah, definitely the problem's rares, yep. I agree. Like there's that's the thing, is there's just so many good rares in standard. Let's slow this down. Here goes nothing. Well speaking of nothing, they may get no value out of this to fairy if we just get to kill it next turn. I won't let you win. Nice, Ojibo. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Marty Knights has tons and tons of good stuff. You get the eight dual lands and everything too. I've got time. Oh, oh right. I can't cast instance. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna hold up Foulmire Knight. That doesn't work. Uncalled for. You're uncalled for, Teferi. Don't 
Don't worry. I got this. So they could have a Kaya's Wrath. It's possible. I'll just play this and keep the Love Struck Beast. Okay, looks like they do not have Instant Speed Kai's Wrath. Scry them both to the top, huh? Yes, Matt, I'm, yeah, I don't really have any interest in streaming Pioneer as of now. Uh, yeah, waiting for it to come to Arena. Um, get that thing out of here. They kept they kept more than just one card on top. Mm. Death is in light. That's unfortunate. They were a lousy servant anyway. Okay. We can probably work our way through this stuff. Probably. I think I had another question I was going to answer. Um, take a look at a deck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can always just, just kind of look at a deck if you want. I, I also do I do deck techs. Um, but yeah, if you yeah, you can always share links to decks in chat. I never never complain about that. Looks like my opponent may have another dance here. No, not another dance. Hey, Chepe. Hopefully no sweeper. So they've played four Noxious Grasps. Maybe they're out of things to kill this Garrick.
Even if they have another dance, they don't have a lot of great things to get back. Which I guess they do. I mean, they just have just a bunch of cyclers, you know, it's just going to be like a draw four. Five, whatever. But that kind of taps them out, and now our fairy guide mother combo. Give that beanstalk giant flying. And GG's. Fairy Guide Mother, Beanstalk Giant, for the win. Oh, awesome, Rildera, good job. Rildera says, I'm using a deck you posted on YouTube, Orzov Control, and I already managed to get to Diamond Ranked. That's awesome, good job. Yeah, GG's, Vivalent. Uh, Chepe says, I'm going to play some FNM standard today. What deck do you think is strong right now? I was planning to go with Jeskai Planeswalker Fires. Yeah, that's a good that's a good choice. I really like Deafening Clarion. I think that's a good one. Um, I like Beanstalk Giant. Give this a try. So, yeah. yeah um, Jeskai Planeswalker Fires. That does sound pretty good to me. Um, would I have the, should I have the 1-1 one, one block the gutter bones? That's, that's the real question. Should I just go like, love struck beast 1-1 one, one block gutter bones? Or do I just let the gutter bones hit me? I guess we kill the gutter bones. But then if they do any damage to me, they get to pick it back up. But then again, we're not really even spending an entire card. We just have, we're spending like the love, the love struck beast part here. All right, well, I'm glad Glad we're doing this. That's a lot of damage they're going to be doing right away. Attacking for six on turn two. It's pretty impressive. You're in a five-win streak with four color wishes today. Good job, good job. All right, our, our mana looks a little silly at times. <laughs> Ugh, that's not a good draw. Probably double pumping the Crusader. Yep. Can still fabled passage for the extra black mana for murderous rider next turn. But obviously I'm very close to dying here. I can't block the Stormfist Crusader and Rotting Regisaur. And I obviously need to block Rotting Regisaur. 
So if they if they have Fervent Champion pump this thing, that's still three damage, which put me down to two. Well, no, I can't. I mean, I can't beat Embercleave. I haven't been able to beat Embercleave for a while. Yeah, that looks really good. The Historic Knight deck, yeah. Looks really good. All right, so Finale and a couple Legion's Ends. I'm going to cut the Lucky Clovers. I don't think we really want to spend turn two doing Lucky Clover. And Lucky Clover is very good with Beanstalk Giant, but the rest of the stuff, like even, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot of life loss off a of Murderous Rider. Yeah, maybe I need. I, mean, I guess. I guess Knight of Autumn could kill Ember Cleave, but usually Ember Cleave just kills you. There's not usually a. And like Ember Cleave doesn't kill you, and then you use Knight of Autumn after that to destroy Ember Cleave. That doesn't happen very often. Hey Rex, I'm I'm a little off today. Admittedly, I'm a little tired and brain's not working as well as normal. But still here playing Magic, having fun. And of course, Re Rex was asking that. Because uh, we did we did the long twelve hour stream yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it is a mono green card that makes white tokens. That is that is kind of weird. <laughs> ah, so like me every day. Just don't have like the green mana. Cutting that fourth Fabled Passage for the Skadla Shrine. We had the Fabled Passage, we could go get another green. Yeah, there's definitely going to be other decks that can compete. It's not going to just only be Bant decks with Nissa, Oko, and Teferi for Historic. There's a lot of really good aggro stuff in Historic. Already, and I 
Um, and you know, Field of the Dead has traditionally done very good against those kind of Bant decks. Um, you know, and then of course you have like Kethis combo and um, there's a there's a lot of good control stuff too. It does seem like there's just there's just a, a lot of good cards in kind of every. Like, every type of deck that you want to play right now. Aggro. Mid-range control combo. I would love to trade Lovestruck Beast for Rotting Register. Like, this is a good double block for me. The problem, obviously, is... The problem is if they have removal or some, you know, something where it doesn't end up being a double block, I basically lose the game on the spot or come close to it. So I'm going to take it and kind of see what happens with their hand. Hmm. Because, of course, they have to discard every single turn to rot with Rotting Regisaur. Oh, yeah, Ember Cleave's always a problem. Ember Cleave's not really a card that's ever not a problem. So they did have the removal. <laughs> Can't spell Embercleave without problem. Why do all these things cost three mana? All right, well, we got to land. It didn't. I don't know if I just didn't attack with Order of Midnight last turn. I don't know if I did. I don't know if I attacked with this thing or not last turn. It wasn't a land that cast this other Order of Midnight for us, but it was a land at least. Yeah, Affinity was a lot of fun to play. Yeah, I liked the Esper Affinity deck that we had. It was a lot of fun. So I'm planning on just playing this and cool. We'll just 
play this. Just need more bodies out there. I, you know, obviously I could have cast the swift end part, but we'll just cast this part. Hey, Starman. Oh, I just did an attack with Order of Midnight again. Okay, had so all right. So, is this the first time that I missed the attack? Possible. Cool. Well, that, that stomp with the damage can't be prevented is why their Oathsworn Knight died instead of it not dying. Okay. Yeah, yep, my opponent should have waited for damage to resolve first, and then they would still have a 3-3 around. They just, yeah, just let damage happen, and then, like, second main phase, you know, like, just afterwards, just stomp it. I'll play two Knight of Autumn instead of two Fairy Guide Mothers. Just be a 4 3 to match up against Bone Crusher Giant. Or maybe we actually kill. This is going to have to get Swamp. So I only have one a single green. I don't really want to shock though. Good job, Crux. Way to go. I mean, our opponent has played zero Ember Cleaves in games one and two. And that's that's all the spark does is kill Ember Cleave. It's not like it does anything else. Our opponents played zero cards that we've been able to that we would have been able to dispark so far. So we need we need finale of eternity to save us. Ugh, stop playing rotting regisaurs. I need them to play a two drop. Or I need to be on the play. I 
Unfortunately, we got neither of those. I mean, I can play Finale and kill Stormfist Crusader and Knight of the Ebon Legion right now. And then just kind of plan on going to one. Oh, it's Toughness X or less. It's not CMC. Never mind. That plan's not going to work. Reading the card helps. All right, turns out Knight of the Ebon Legion into Stormfist Crusader, into Rotting Regisaur, into Rotting Regisaur, into Embercleave. Turns out that kills people, including us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Lavinia is awesome. Yeah, they found the Ember Cleave. Hey, Zoltan. All right, more mulligans. I kind of want to keep that Garrick with the Beanstalk Giant ramping up for us, but I guess not. <laughs> How does a dinosaur hold a sword? Steam Vents probably means Jeskai control, like Jeskai fires. The most popular Steam Vents deck right now. Could be Grixis Fires also. So basically, either way. And then just throw down a Foulmire Knight. So I guess I could have just played a Giant Killer, but... Um, this song is It Could Be You by Blur. Alright, I guess go out there and attack. Yeah, the last, like, week MTG Bot hasn't been working on songs as much. Hey, QQ! Thank you so much. We're continuing the sub there. Good evening. Yeah, it looks like I was behind one. That looks like that's sub number four on the day. Jerk move. So yeah, obviously I could have just played Innkeeper and just played these two things and drawn two cards. But I thought with them playing two Thought Erasures already, they probably weren't going to be playing a third. But then also we just get more value out of 
you know, going slower and just playing a couple Foulmire Knights like this to draw cards before doing that. So it does look like this is going to be an important value match with our opponent reducing the resources on both sides with these thought erasures. I guess it's not, is it? Alright, should be updated now. Get some more thought erasures. Go ahead. Go ahead. Play some more thought erasures. Meditate and prepare. Ah, uh, I thought that was thought erasure. At first, yeah, like when just kind of flickered up on the screen. If you wish to own your prowess. your rage. At least I hid the Garrick down here at the bottom instead of keeping it in my hand and having having it get thought erasured away. So that was smart. I sure, I sure miss Veiling Thought Erasures. Yeah, those are the days. I didn't want to shuffle the... Uh, shuffle the library and risk Garrick getting killed there. Their mana base looks pretty bad over there. They, they can't cast Nickel Bolas right now. They did have the fourth thought erasure. Let's 
So I probably want to bounce a Foulmire Knight. To be able to draw another card. If I bounce Beanstalk Giant... I guess we bounce Beanstalk Giant. We get a, a land out of the deck. It's drawing a card, it's just our worst possible card to draw. But hopefully we don't draw... Yeah, it does kind of, you know, we'll see if they if they minus. So Okay, so yeah, so they're minusing on the Beanstalk Giant there. I mean, honestly, if I'm them, I, I may be ticking up instead of minusing. I will return one day. We still keep drawing lands, though. Immolation sensation. Get out of my way. Or, you know, don't. It's unfortunate. We've gone through 27 cards. But unfortunately, like, three of the spells that we've gone through were just milled over with that thing. <laughs> yeah, I would have ticked up with the Nicol Bolas, but it doesn't matter. We just kept on drawing lands. Do I even need these Disparks? All the Murderous Riders? I mean, like, Giant Killer... Giant Killer and Fairy Guide Mother are our worst cards. Taking out a bunch of adventure creatures does make Innkeeper a little worse, though. Maybe we'll play one Dispark or two Clover. Thanks, Frisky Biscuits. Glad you're loving the Patreon content. Good. Yeah, I wrote some more there today. Um, I wrote some hidden gems for Historic. One in each color. Yeah, they're probably a Fires deck. That's a good call. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Bolas uses three of the five colors, and we can't knock just grasp it. <laughs> hey, look, another one lander where we mulligan, and then we have millions of lands. Oh, this time we don't have millions of lands. I guess we had two lands last time also. This is the exact same as game one. One land, mulligan, two land.
It's either put back Murderous Rider or put back that Shepherd of the Flock. Um, put back the Shepherd. Like, if we play Lucky Clover on two, Beanstalk on three, or like the Fertile Footsteps on three, we will be able to just go grab two black mana. Obviously, they just they just led with all four Thought Ragers last game. So yeah, why not just play a bunch of Thought Ragers again? Why not? This is three three games straight going into last game where we mulligan and they just have the best curve they can have. Well, I guess they just had the best turn two and three last game. They didn't really have the best turn four they could have had last game. Wait, what? They didn't take Beanstalk Giant? What's going on? I, I only had one good card in my hand. How did they not take it? What do you suggest for players without the rare dual lands that they want to play some more fancy decks? Going with common dual lands, coming in to play tapped, or playing the the normal basics and accept the less consistency? I have just the trick um, probably this. a combination of the two. I think you definitely need... Mm. Man, I want to kill that, but I also want to save this Murderous Rider for Nicol Bolas. Anyway, yeah, you're gonna need you're gonna need some dual lands, so I think I think you should play some of the common dual lands, but maybe not just all common dual lands, because then you, you will be pretty slow um, with having all of your lands come into play tapped. So you have to kind of play a mixture of those and basic lands. Put thoughtfulness before action. So it's still going with the duels, but maybe a little, maybe a little bit less amount of the duels than what you would uh, normally play. Niz Dramati with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Niz. Thank you very much there, Niz Dramati, for that support. All right, good hand. <sighs> Turn two, Thought Erasure. Turn three, Narset. Turn four, Fires plus Drawn. Turn five, they get another Drawn and millions of cards. Yep. To be expected there. Just like us drawing lands, to be expected. Thanks, Nez. Well, unfortunately, this is looking like this is going to be the last game for our Abzan. Suits me well. Defiance has consequence. That's weird. Out of my way. I'm burning up here. Let's get toast. Looks like this is going to be the, the last game of our Abzan Adventure donation deck here. I said that's weird because... 
like playing another playing a second planeswalker when I have when they know about the murderous rider lucky clover that I have is a little odd. Like they would just give me another really good target range. instead of just waiting a turn. Yeah, yeah, we won't have lands in our opening hand, but you can bet we'll draw 10 of them straight off the top. So I could have gone uh, Innkeeper plus Foulmire Knight. That just draws us one card. We're going to wait and be able to draw two here. It's an incredible waste of a Casualties of War if they just cast it right here. It's an incredible waste. You do you. I guess I should have continued to play all, all the rest of the stuff, though, first. Now they can play instance. Okay. Didn't hurt us, but... I don't know if that was the right take. Maybe we should have just taken the Narset. Just gives them just a blocker. I, I probably should have just taken the Narset. The past, present, meditate and prepare. Yeah, I should have just taken the Narset. Yes, I'll be continuing to, to play Historic. We played Historic for 12 hours yesterday. I have three standard donation decks for today, though. But we will continue to play more Historic. If you, yeah, if you missed any of the, the decks for yesterday for Historic, check them out on YouTube. I'm not going to be dedicating certain days to Historic. I'll just be playing Historic normally, like standard. It's not going to be like a, a once a week type thing. There's not going to be special days for it. Hey, Rochian. I'm, I'm hanging in there. Um, pets are doing great. Hawkeye's doing great. I'm pretty worn out after yesterday. Warrior 
queen necromancer has a nice death. We're hanging in there. Yeah, they just bedevil. All right, here. I give up. I give up. Okay. All right, so we went two and two. Um. Um, yeah, basically, uh, you know, we went two and two, we had, we didn't have like the best, uh, you know, like mana things, you know, like we mulliganed a lot and, and then we flooded out a lot. I wish we had more, I think we needed more top end stuff, like more ways to use a lot of mana, like more card advantage. It kind of felt like, you know, not having once upon a time to like go find your innkeepers and all that kind of stuff. The great hinge was awesome. It kind of felt like we just needed more great hinges um Soren not so good um as far as the the white cards I wasn't super impressed by giant killer um but I did like shepherd saving stuff that was pretty good um and fairy guide mother helped us fly over helped our beanstalk giant fly over um another army there the the traditional or like the the regular Golgari adventures deck that that you know lots of people are playing um, that is a stronger deck. That is a stronger version of this. But, you know, our, our donation deck, you know, like we, we tried playing Abzan and we tried with like Lucky Clover, Beanstalk Giant with Abzan. Um, but it did, it, it's not as powerful as uh, the regular Golgari decks with, uh, you know, Questing Beasts and Vivians and Rankles and uh, all that kind of stuff. Didn't seem like. Um,. Garrick was awesome. Yeah, basically, yeah. Soren, Soren wasn't wasn't as good. Not as not as good as like just playing another six mana planeswalker or a great henge. Because once once we started Beanstalk Giant, we had lots and lots of mana. Um. But there we go. Uh, Casualties of War in the deck. Yeah, that that could be a good one to have in the deck. At, if not in the main board, in the sideboard, like maybe that's better than find or the finale of Eternity. Um, could also play things like Kaya's Wrath or um, Realm Cloak Giant. Um, I think, you know, I, I play the finale, but I think uh, I think the Realm Cloak Giant would have been a better idea here. We That was like our last cut was like Realm Cloak Giant or finale. And I wanted to try finale with like our ability to get lots of mana. But I think the Realm Cloak Giant probably would have, would have uh, done more for us. Um, but cool, cool. So there we go. So thanks, thanks to the deck there. Um, all right, Joe. Have a good night. Um, but yeah, that's it here for Abs and Adventure. Uh, so for those of you watching on YouTube, uh, you know, please hit that like button over there. Leave some comments. Do all that kind of stuff. And as we were talking a little bit ago, um, I hope you check out the Patreon page. It's three dollars a month, where you only get charged the first of the month. You don't get charged for signing up. And um, I'm just writing stuff over there. Um, every couple of days and uh, today I put a new post on there about some hi some hidden gems for your historic decks uh, but that's it here for Abzan Adventure so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video